hello everyone and welcome to the podcast. My name is Billy Dees. You can find the Billy Dees podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, pretty much anywhere that podcasts can be found. You can also follow me on Twitter at Billy Dees. I'm on Twitter. You can tweet me anytime. You just you just have to be nice now. It's okay to disagree, but you just have to be nice. Speaking of nice, on the studio line with me today, I have Catherine Bosley. How are you doing today, Catherine? I'm good. How are you, Billy? It's great to be here. Thank you very much. Now, you may recognize her name. She's a fixture on, on local TV here in Northeastern Ohio, but she's known all over for a lot of things. She is an accomplished speaker, a group consultant, a personal coach, and of course, as I mentioned, a television journalist. Now, she has a mission. Her mission is to help you stay safe in this day of increasing what she refers to as digital danger. And she has an account of her own experience, and, and you can uh, find that on YouTube, Catherine Bosley, and it's a TED Talks. And she talks about her experience. And for those of you who may be interested, it's a it's actually a very uh, scary little story. So you, if you would like, check that out. And that has given her a passion that can be stated as there is always hope after cyber humiliation and bullying. And a better you can emerge on the other side once we find the steadfast inter, inner strength that she believes we all possess. Um, and I, I would have to say that's something that a lot of people may not believe about themselves. Oh, right. But, but you believe everybody has it. They just have to access it. I do. Right. And, and sometimes it just really takes being put to the test to find out really what you're made of. And I think that we all find that there is something inside of us that will. I mean, there's the fight and flight instinct, right? Sure. Well, sure. You put that fight instinct into gear. Uh, you'll find out that you've got a strength you never knew you had. And unfortunately, it often takes uh, some traumatic situations uh, to for you to realize that. Yeah, sure. Now you, like I said, we're we're speaking and we're both in northeastern Ohio at the moment. Um, but you, where are you from originally? Are you from this area, or I am. I grew up outside of outside of Cleveland in uh, Ashtabula County in Little Saybrook Township. That's where I grew up, and uh, that's where my parents still live. And I certainly go back there and visit often. Oh, that's awesome. When you're now you're a busy person, obviously, uh, when you when you're not doing all these things for 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 your career and, and for media and, and and related things, what do you like to do just to have fun? Well, I love exercise. I love outdoors. I love running. I've, I've done a few marathons and uh, really? my, husband, my husband and I love cars, too. So you'll find us in the summer at uh, car shows all over the place. So yeah, sure. I'm busy with. But some fun things. Mm -hmm. I, I need to be more active. That is for sure. I, I, I wish I could say I run, I walk. <laughs> but when I when I have the when I yeah when I have the ambition, um, just to, to set the stage for what we're going to talk about today, can you just briefly describe your advocacy uh, and 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 what you try to get across about online behavior? Sure. I think what I try to get across is both cautionary and inspirational. So on the cautionary side, it comes down to the reality that today there is so little room for that what was I thinking moment before it could be attached to you forever and for all to see one mouse click away. That means that we need to be so careful of all the decisions that we're making. And again, online and off. Um, and I don't always know that there are cameras all around us all the time, yeah. whether they're surveillance cameras or there are other people running around with their, their little cell phones. And you never know what they might be looking for, what they might capture, what they might put out there of you that could somehow be misinterpreted. Today, you know, sure. it used to be what well, what happened in the moment was meant for the moment. And, and we're all humans and we all make mistakes and we all get carried away. We all get caught up in the moment. But today, the reality is what's meant for the moment is no longer guaranteed to stay in the moment. And that's something yes. that we all need to to be more vigilant about understanding and more vigilant in our actions and so forth. And, of course, what you put out there on the Internet yourself, well, that's kind of uh, speaks for speaks for itself as far sure. as the dangers that that poses. 
Well, interestingly, um, there's a lot of people, um, I'll use the phrase shooting their mouth off about the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah. I, I'm really, I'm really shocked right. by some of the comments that uh, the governor and uh, Dr. Acton um, have received. If you go down through that Twitter feed, right. it, it's, it, it's amazing to me, the aggressive negativity that comes at them and, and, and they're public servants and, you know, they're trying to do the best they can. Isn't that the case? It, though? That's so true. And and you do, you feel for them because they, yes. they've not been through this either. This is new for all of us. So yes. maybe they're making mistakes. Maybe they're not. I don't think we'll know until this is all said and done. If we ever truly know, but can you imagine the pressure that they're under right now to do the right thing, literally save lives right now. And that kind of folds into, you, you know, your digital, footprint. Um, those those things really never go away, even if we yeah. delete them. Oh, I was going to say, so my motto, uh, my brand is forever and for all to see. That's the keynote that I take everywhere. Um, yes. And so once it's out there, no matter how many times you hit delete, once it's out there in cyberspace, it's out there forever and for all to see. Uh, yes. So now as people are sounding off and emotions are high right now, and it's so understandable. We're fearful. We're, we're angry. Um, no one knows what's going to happen. And so, yeah, that's going to elicit emotions. But when you start to put those emotions out there online, you are making yourself vulnerable. You're putting yourself in a situation where you could actually uh, say something that can come back and haunt you years down the road. And it's just because you wanted to sound off online. So uh, that's where my advocacy is mostly, is making sure that people are so careful with it, put out there and understand what you're putting out there again is forever and for all to see. So as I am scrolling through Twitter feeds and, and Facebook posts, I am seeing these things and they're raising alarms. I'm thinking, do these people yeah. understand? And, um, this moment could go viral. What they're putting out there could be taken completely out of context or even, you know, for face value and could go yeah. viral, and now it's never going to go away. That moment of vulnerability. Yes, that's true. And 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 you had mentioned I, I follow your 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 content, and one of the things that you brought up was that a lot of people are in situations now where maybe they're 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 laid off yeah. and they might they might be at some point going to change jobs completely or they might be looking for a job to supplement their income and now i i i'm I, your point in that post was that people don't realize now that employers are observing what you're doing online when you apply oh sure when i sp i speak every, everywhere from from teenagers all the way up to CEOs. And yeah, you know, when you are applying for a job, so often employers will go through and they will look at your social media and they'll get an idea of what you are like on your social media. They will Google you before they even look at your resume or your, or your credentials. Yeah. And so yeah. if you're putting this stuff out there, now it's going to be so fresh. And now your job search is fresh as well. And that's going to line up the perfect storm for failure and disappointment. Now, you recently did a, you know, following this up, you recently did a, a, a blog post that outlined five tips right. in terms of acting properly online and especially with all that's going on and, and all the conspiracy theories that people are throwing out there. And the whole point of the uh, post was obviously be careful um, what, what you're throwing out there. And now I believe these are five good tips, no matter what what your content right. is. <laughs> yes, so uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through these. And the first one is pause before you post. You know, and it's always a rule of thumb. So maybe draft what you want to say or how you want to respond to something. Set it aside for a little bit and then go back and reread. And if it still feels right, if it feels reasonable, logical, and you don't think that it could really be taken out of context, although you never know, you know, sure, know. send. And most likely, though, if you're posting or commenting, responding based, in, based on an emotional reaction, you will go back and find reason to edit what you're originally going to put out there or maybe even delete it altogether and think, phew, I'm so glad I paused before I posted yeah. that. Yes. Okay. The other one is um, revealing your vulnerabilities, and, and you have it listed as ask yourself one big question. And, and I, I found it a curious thing that, that people, they seem guarded about their privacy, but they reveal so much. What should you be asking yourself when you're revealing something about yourself? Yeah, well, what kind of vulnerability am I revealing that could call into question my character? 
Uh, so are you expressing too much anger or fear, for example, that might be interpreted as someone who is anything but a leader? You know, if you're right. saying that you're fearful and if you're you're saying that you're angry about something or you're just calling out other people, this is going to certainly send out some some red alarm or some red flags. You know, not only for a future employer, but hey, what if you're up for an award down the road? What if you're yeah. up in the dating scene down the road? But now they look back and they can see these comments that are full of anger and distrust and and things like that. You're showing a vulnerability that's very unattractive. And again, will bring up red flags. So yes. or show yourself as someone who is easily stirred up to you. Just what you say out there, it's just so many things about you that you don't really think about. You know, it's come down to connotations. Now, you talk about taking inventory of the words you use. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Because th that kind of brings up a question that, that I have, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you explain this first. Sure. You don't want to use words that are too strong, especially when we're talking negative speak. So extreme talk. So there's a good chance then that your emotions are running too high to go public when you've got those extreme words coming in. So it's superlatives, right? I think okay. we hear our president using those often. Um, yes. <laughs> and they can always be misinterpreted or taken out of context by others down the road. So that's such an easy check mark. Am I using too many extreme words? OK, well, what, what I was going to ask you about is we're, we're in a situation right now with political correctness and things like that, that I find myself even when I'm talking to you now. All right. I'm, I'm kind of censoring my words. You know, is, is this too strong of a thing to ask a woman and so forth. And, and there are times when an innocent comment, you know, if, yeah. if, forget, the, you know, the purposeful negativity, but just an innocent comment. And, and we have this thing now called cancel culture, which I do not <laughs> agree with. I, I, I don't know that there is a rule book for how to monitor that, but I, I suppose that you should have some filter on these days, e even if what you feel you're talking about is innocent. I agree with you. I agree with you. You need some degree of filter, but we are still people, you know, and yes. there are still common emotions that we that we share and we should be able to freely express. Uh, you don't want to be you don't want to go overboard, uh, especially when you're documenting something you, when you're writing it and you're putting it out there online. You know, maybe a conversation face to face with a friend or or over the phone. Certainly you can be more free, but you do need to be careful. You don't want to offend anybody because, again, it's out there forever and for all to see. So you do need to be so mindful. And that goes back to rule number one, pause before you post, which means yeah. go back and, and check again. <laughs> Use words that could be uh, taken out of context and used against you. Exactly. And and the next one then would be thinking about your attention and, and intention. I wanted to pronounce that properly. Um, and that kind of goes back to choosing your words. I mean, it, it's one thing to be uh, purposely negative, which we shouldn't be doing in the in the first place. Right. But if, if you have a concept that you're trying to get across, you should do it in a way that it's very clear. Am I interpreting that step correctly? Well, sure. You just want to make sure that your intention, no matter what, is not to hurt or insult or shake up anyone else. Because when you're using, when that's your intention of putting something out there, you're going to regret that you did that. Uh, again, exactly. uh, it can come back and haunt you down the road. It can make you look so bad, even though maybe you're calling out someone who really is a jerk. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just not wise to put your thoughts out there about them being a jerk and uh, using any kind of words that would insult or hurt again. Um, so yeah. even if they deserve it. And, and like I said, we all know that there are people who deserve it. You don't want to be the person who stoops to their level then. And it could be easy to go on even lower than them if you get riled up enough about something. Yeah. So yeah. Make sure that what you're putting out there, your intention is not on the negative side. Yes. And that kind of wraps things up. You really want to just want to stay away from the negativity. And yeah, that's, um, five. that's kind of like the last step. Yeah. Um, I, and that's kind of for me, um, not only when I generate posts or generate content, do I stay away from negativity, but I don't engage it when it comes at me. And, and I've, I've gotten it. Okay? Right. I've gotten some horrible things thrown my way in, in the years that I'm doing stuff like this. And um, I just ignore it. I, I don't think that you should engage it. Nothing ever goes 
good comes of engaging negativity. And that's for sure. And yeah. believe me, yeah. I am very familiar with that, with, with negative things coming at you. And the more you engage it, then the, the more fired up things are going to get and the more of a chance that you're going to look bad and just as bad as the person who's firing off the nasty things. Now you're firing back nasty things as well. Yeah, there, nothing good can come of it. Leave it. And, and then you're, you're not validating it either if you just leave it. And move on. We kind of touched on 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 your uh, your bigger mission here, but this leads us into a, another set of little guidelines that you have, and this is trying to make people understand the importance that this ever uh, changing digital world that we live in. No person, no company, no organization is really immune from some sort of a catastrophe online, whether it's just a a bad public relations misstep or, you know, some uh, bit and piece like you were talking about getting out there. So to avoid that as much as possible, you have uh, five digital dangers. Yeah, five top five digital dangers that are uh, a big part of the the keynote uh, speech that I give. And the number one thing, of course, is this myth that there's privacy online or with anything yeah. digital. And it drives me crazy when I come across a risque post or picture uh, on someone's social media and I bring it to their attention and they say, oh, don't worry about it. I got my privacy settings set. Only my yeah. private and Facebook uh, friends can, can see it. You know, so I bring up the story. Uh, it's based on a true story. I've changed some things with it. But so this, this guy, his name is Sam. And uh, from the time Sam is a child, it's realized that he's an incredible performer. And so his dream through his life, and I make people, I ask people to think about their dreams because once you realize your dreams and you realize how risky, uh, irresponsible social media behavior can be. So I yeah. his dream then is to be on a, a global stage, is to be a first class, world class performer. And he's in college and uh, he finally gets this phone call from a global production company saying, Sam, we love your stuff. Well, as soon as you graduate, call us. We have a position for you. And so now this is Sam's possible dream coming true. So then one day after that, Sam and his buddy, they're hanging out on campus. And uh, they sit down and they have lunch. And Sam looks over and he notices there's a crazy looking contraption on the grass next to them. He picks it up and it's a bong. It's a crazy looking bong and Sam has never taken part in bong activity and never planned on it. Uh, but he thinks it's kind of funny and ironic that he's holding this thing. Cause he's always been on the straight and narrow as his buddy okay. a picture of him pretending he's smoking it, puts it up on his private Facebook page. Cause he knows his friends are going to get a kick out of this. Cause this is so not him. And it's just a joke. Right. And yeah. His friends do get a kick out of it. And one friend in particular thinks this is great. I want to share it with a few more people. He can't because of Sam's privacy settings. But we all know what he can right. screenshot it, right? Yeah. So he screenshots it and then shares it with a few more friends. Now they're sharing it with strangers and now it's all over campus. And now as Sam graduates and he's packing his bags to head to, to claim his dream job, that global production company calls him and they say, Sam, sorry, we are going to have to rescind our offer. We've done a little research on you and your image doesn't quite fit our brand, but good luck. Yeah. Click. All because he thought that there was something that resembled privacy online in the digital world. And another thing yeah. with that is, you know, even if you don't send a picture or uh, anywhere, all you have to do is take that picture. And as soon as you take that picture, for most of us, it goes up into the cloud. So it's being yes. shared essentially, and that cloud has indeed. So just make sure that everything, every picture you're taking, every post that you're putting out there, make sure it's something that you agree and are willing to have the whole world see and says something about you you want to say about you. And again, don't take any risk of being misinterpreted. So, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Now, you have two categories of pictures on your uh, little uh, minefield of digital dangers here. You have uh, pictures that we can control to some degree and ones we have no control over. Right. Pictures and posts you can control. Um, so that goes down to the selfie thing. Uh you know, never before have we had such 
uh, power to sabotage ourselves in a virtual split second. And we all, yeah. you know, I like selfies. Selfies are fun. But especially when I speak to kids, you've got to take inventory of everything that you're putting out there about yourself. So with the selfie, right. take inventory on three levels. What's going on behind you? So what kind of signage is back there? Is there, uh, you know, a sleazy bar back there? Is there a political sign that you don't want associated with you? Are there a bunch of empty beer bottles? I mean, if you start to go through some Instagram accounts, especially college age kids, you're going to see a whole bunch of empty booze bottles or, or yeah. what's on, what's behind you. Number two, what are other people doing in that picture that could be a poor reflection on you? So with me, I don't let anyone do any hand gestures, even if it's the peace sign. I won't be in a picture with that because I don't want to take a chance. Oh, okay. I don't want to take a chance. So that's, that's one of my rules. And number three, what are you doing that could be misinterpreted down the road? I keep coming back to the word misinterpreted because so often things are just taken out of context, like Sam and, and the bomb, you know, so the three levels, okay. what's going on with you in the environment, what are other people doing and what are you doing? So pictures and posts, we control. It's really important to think about things like that. And also with pictures and posts, you control, understand that everything you put out there is not just about you anymore. It's a reflection uh, on your whole family, uh, it's on, on your classmates, mm -hmm. on your coworkers, you know. So if you're putting yeah. something out there that's outrageous, understand that maybe your parents or your kids are going to suffer because of what you're doing. So pictures and posts, we can probably got to take in, take into account everything it has all the potential power that it has. So pictures and posts now that we don't control, that comes back to first of all, Billy. I'm going to hit up the surveillance. Uh, cameras because oh, okay. there's so little regulation. If something is happening in public and it is captured, the images are captured, it is fair game. And television news uses that a lot. You, you know, we sure. use surveillance video. We use other people's pictures that are, you know, out in public. It is fair game. So understand that if, hey, you're at a gas station and uh, you're pumping gas and say you're a woman and your skirt goes flying up like crazy or your heel breaks or whatever, um, if someone is recording that, you know, you're being caught on surveillance camera with that, you're at the mercy of whoever is running that surveillance camera. And it could be a social media gold moment for them. I mean, with a guy, maybe a, you're you're putting air in your tire or you're changing a flat and you're showing a little too much behind. You're not thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, so pictures That's and true. posts, we have no control over. You know, I wasn't long ago, my husband and I, we were in Nashville and we're walking down the street and these two young ladies, two, they're, they're just of drinking age, they're sisters, and, and they stop in front of us. They decide they want to socialize with us. And one is very drunk, and she starts dancing wildly on the sidewalk. I share this in my, my TEDx talk. Lou gestures profanity, a heck of a show. And it reminds me of yeah. my disaster that happened a few years before that. So I turned to her sister, the less drunk one, I said, got your hands full. And before I could say another word, the dancing sister, she stops and she snaps at me and she says, you only live once. And the two then go arm in arm down the sidewalk, as do so mm -hmm. many of those cell phones that are following them. So, um, so from surveillance video down to the cell phones of other people, we're talking about posts and pictures you can't control. So you've got to be so mindful of what you're doing out there and yeah. what can happen with it. So what are these people going to do with these pictures and these videos yeah. that they're taking of these young women walking down the street? Surely they're going to post them. And, you know, we have the facial recognition. So the, yeah. you know, the catching up to them certainly are, are, are there. A lot of these things that you're talking about also fold into your next point, which is the written words. Yes, the written words. You know, we are always thinking that, you know, pictures are the first thousand words, but the written words can be just if not more powerful. And so often when you're putting just words out there in a tweet uh, or an, even in a text, um, you're emotional. And oftentimes, sure, you're going to be happy, but other times you're really angry about something. Uh, I, I use an example of one of my former coworkers. Uh, we had a fantastic event taking place in, in the town where I was working. It was, it could have been a, a Emmy award winning moment for producers, for uh, reporters, for anchors, all of us. It was a great thing. All eyes were on our town right. and what our, our media could do. Well, his whole show fell apart. Everything went wrong. Reporters weren't where they we were supposed to be. Uh, technical problems. And by the end of the day, he was so angry that he just put some words up on Facebook. 
something yeah. to the effect of what was supposed to be the best day of my life and career ended up to be the worst. I will never forgive those responsible. Hashtag revenge. That's yeah. all. Just words. Of course he got fired. To this day, he still is not able to reclaim his his dream job in, in television news. So just words. And if you look up uh, Justine Seiko, when Twitter first came out, uh, she was on her way. She was an up and rising public relations star. She was in her mid 20s and okay. she was on her way to uh, South Africa on vacation. She had a layover in London and she's tweets on my way to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Oh, that's right. I don't have to worry about it. I'm white. Something. Oh, to that effect. yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. I do remember that now that you mention it. It yeah. was infamous. And again, just words. And when, of course, you know, her Twitter account blew up, she had people at the airport in in uh, Africa ready to hurt her. She lost her job. She had to go into hiding. Um, and when she was finally interviewed, she said, I was being facetious. I'm, I'm from Africa originally from South Africa. And I, I was just mocking anyone who would believe something so crazy. Right. You know, when you put the words out there, you can't hear the tone of voice. You can't see the, the facial expressions. And so you know, emojis help a little bit now, but yeah, you know, that turned her life upside down to this day. Right. Yeah. That's one of the, one of the things I always say is, and, and this is something I conjured up, but you basically have no rights in the court of public opinion. No, it's so, true. and yeah, and so, you, you know, be very careful how you frame things. And if you're going to be sarcastic or something like that, make sure it's framed in a way where you have that backup. And I hear again, um, um, my inclination is to not do, <laughs> not do it at all, but, sure. um, sure, but and the last two that's, and that's, that's another thing that's a big problem is especially for young people coming up, going into careers, you have to have a social media presence out there. Otherwise yeah. it's going to work against you as well. And a future employer is going to say, what are they not with the world? Do they, are they exactly something? Sure. what's going on? So yeah, it's kind of a double edged sword. Now your, your last thing to stay away from, and I noticed this happening a lot is the calling out and the shaming. Mm. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, uh, unless someone is committing a crime or hurting someone or, or an animal, if you're calling out or shaming anyone online, you are bullying. And even if you're calling out a bully, you're bullying. And it's going yeah. to come back around. Uh, you know, and sometimes people think that they're making things better by calling out or shaming a situation. Uh, there was a story about this man who lived in this pristine little town and he loved his town. He was so proud of it. Um, but he hated that this one fast food restaurant was terrible with their service and, and so forth. And he thought that it was a poor yeah. collection on his town. So he decides he's going to call management, do all he can. Nothing is happening. The store is not improving. And he's so angry about it. He decides, I'm going to go in. I'm going to document. I'm going to record my whole transaction. And yes, the service was bad. And he called out the person who was waiting on him about how bad the service was. And he posted it up on online. And yeah, it went viral. And uh, and he was seen as a bully, even though he was trying to improve things, not necessarily shame or hurt anyone. But sometimes we don't even realize it, that by calling yeah. out, you are shaming people and you are bullying people. And it can be very hurtful in, in the long run. Yeah, a lot of people have a hard time uh, recovering from it. I mean, it... You know, you, I don't need to tell you in this business, you have to have a thick skin. And to what level we we can guard against that, a lot of people don't. And you can, uh, you know, shame somebody and just absolutely bring them down so low that it changes their life. And um, I always say, you know, don't do stuff like that. I mean, that's just that, that's just being a good human being. Right. And, so, and from my experience with it, I was on the other end of it. I was cyberbullied on a global level before we even had the term cyberbullying. And it, there is a brainwashing that takes place when you see cruelty coming oh yeah. at you about you on that cell phone, on that laptop. It is a, it's a brainwashing. It's and sure. it, it's it took a while for the experts to even quite comprehend that. And I still think that they're a little confused about how powerful that is. 
And, um, it can be very powerful. Right. Um, it can be devastating. And uh, here, here where I'm from, uh, in one of the local school districts here last year, we had a whole rash of suicides and some other things that were related to online bullying. So it's really nothing to mess around with. Now, being that it can be awful, it can be really bad, um, you point out that there is hope. You can recover from it. You can get through it. And and one thing that you have come up with is what you call this PACT strategy, and that's P. A C T. Yes, yeah, exactly. and of course that yeah, it stands for uh, uh, you know something different uh, to help you give you strength, right? Uh, yeah, to help you fall back on, on 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 these on these four things that can help you recover from something like this if if you have been a victim of it. So we'll start with PE, and that is people that you love and trust, right? So you know, I was to the point where I was suicide was a very serious thought for me because the cruelty was so devastating. I am living proof yeah. though, that it is survivable. And when I look back at how I did it in retrospect, yeah, it comes down to my pack P, people. You need to turn to your people, the people you love and trust the most and tell them what you are dealing with. So often, especially kids, they're embarrassed by it. They're embarrassed that they're being yeah. shamed or bullied, or maybe they brought something on themselves that, that they're embarrassed about. And they go in their bedrooms with their cell phones or their, their laptops and they, and they hide and they don't tell anybody about the, the torment that they're suffering. You need to recruit your army. Mine was my faith, family, and friends, I always say. Yeah. And, and maybe that army is one person, but you need to tell people, even that one person, how you are feeling and what you are experiencing. And maybe that person, uh, that could yeah. be your lifesaver. So yes. P for people. A yes. is for abandon. And, it, and this is so important. Get off of that platform. Get away from that group of people yes. that are, that are um, slinging hurt and, and, and cruelty at you. Because the more you look at it, the more you accept it, the more you take it in, the worse it's going to seem unnecessarily. Get off of that platform, shut it down, get outside, go play with your dog, go hang out with your kids. I mean, yeah. you're bullying. There's no age limit with bullying. Adults deal with it just as much as kids do. Kids are just having a tougher time dealing with it because they're young and they're just learning life, you know. But yeah, but yeah certainly abandon. Uh, go, go do other things and it will definitely be a, a healing step. And the, thir the third step is the C of the pact, and uh, that is connecting with professionals for guidance. Absolutely. Professionals like myself, uh, CatherineBosley.com, people who have been through stuff like this uh, and, and people who are learning about how to, to deal with it. There are so many websites, anti-bullying websites uh, online that they're there for you. Again, for any age, but also with with kids, there's guidance counselors, there's teachers, you know, who are being trained more and more how, how to handle yes. this. Also, it can go as far as law enforcement or lawyers. I mean, there are some legal steps you can take, too. So connect with professionals who know what Absolutely. you're doing in this area. Yeah, and a lot of people don't want to reach out for help, uh, any, especially when it's anything uh, regarding their emotions or, or what's going on inside their head because they feel it's a sign of weakness. And and that's something that we really, I always preach, don't feel that way. You don't feel that way if you hurt your elbow, if, if you are you're struggling with some sort of an emotional thing because maybe something somebody done something to you or for some other reason, don't be afraid to ask for help. Right, and, and, and that's so much the case, and I think that more and more um, it's understood that that's a big part of the problem and leading to the epidemic of suicide as a result of cyber cruelty. So I believe that that's why we're seeing this uprising of support and recognition. And, um, you know, you see even PSAs and so forth about bullying and there are people there for right. you. So, you know, and it could be a private conversation with, with a professional. You know, yeah. there are professionals out there who want to help. Absolutely. And that brings us to the last step, no matter how bad it is. Uh, this, this too. Yes, this too <laughs> shall pass. That's yeah. the T in, in my pact. And, you know, uh, who hasn't been in a situation in their life where they're thinking, oh, my goodness, this thing is the end of me. I'm going to die. This is just it's going to ruin me. I and mean, we've, we've all been there, right? Whether it's happening in your personal life or your professional life, it's a devastating situation. And what happens but well, you're here today, you survived it. And even, even better, not only do you survive hardships, we all learn from them. So you become wiser and you become stronger and you become more equipped then 
to be able to use all this knowledge you gain through this to help others along the way who might find themselves in, in similar situations. So this yes. too shall pass. It is one of my favorite sayings in life and, uh, and I live by it. Absolutely. Sure. Now you do a lot, as we talked about, you do a lot of public speaking and advocacy yeah. and what types of audiences, what are there any particular groups out there in society that need to hear this message maybe more so than others? Or how would you, how would you frame that? You know, I think anyone who spends any time online or is in the digital world needs to hear this message. I'm really heartened at taking it again from, I usually begin in High schools, that's where I focused for a while, uh, but more and more principals were asking me to go down a little bit lower and start at the junior high level. So I, I have talked to fifth and sixth graders. I prefer seventh graders all the way through college. I've been on the National Association for Campus Activities on their national stage and regional stage uh, with this message. And then all, all the way into the corporate world, because, uh, you know, on the corporate level, you have to think that anything employees do can come back and, and hurt the company. So this comes down to reputation management when you get up to that level. So the, the message that I bring on that level basically uh, encourages more of a, a, a discipline uh, online and off and a more of a eye opening about, you know, how what you do out there uh, could come back and haunt your employer as well. Sure. So again, it goes all the way from, from kids to the most successful adults. Yeah. And sure. I change my message you know, accordingly. And I, I use my own experience. That is the anchor of, of all of my uh, talks. And when you see sure. that, that I was vulnerable and that I went through the worst of the worst with something like this and that I was able to come back I think that it would encourage anyone to understand that if I could do it, they could do it. I mean, mine was on a global level. And listen, you don't have to go viral at a global level for it to turn your life upside down. All you have to do is go no. viral in your own little world for your life to be kind of a living hell. Well, you, with your own experiences, and obviously you're, you're a seasoned uh, journalist and professional, you have a wealth of information. Where can people find you online? I invite you to go to KatherineBosley.com. It'll give you basically the whole I, the whole rundown of, of my keynotes and of my mission and hopefully provide uh, some cautionary messages as well as some inspirational messages. Inspiration is, is really what I love to fall back on because you can put so much caution out there, but if you don't follow it up with inspiration, then it can be kind of dark. So there's a, there's sure. a lot of good things to be said. And there's a lot of, I include a lot of humor in my, my presentation too, because um, there's lots of situations that I bring up that we can all relate to and we have to laugh at ourselves in some way, but we also have to learn from ourselves um, the mistakes that we could make. And you're on Twitter and all that as well. I'm on right? Twitter. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. I am on Facebook and uh, I, I love to correspond with anybody who reaches out. That is absolutely fantastic. Catherine, uh, some really great information here. Thank you very much for sharing it with us today. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. Gladly. Thank you so much for having me on and giving me another platform to, to spread what I think it could be a life-saving message in some respect. Oh, my pleasure. Now, we've been speaking to Catherine Bosley. And again, you can check out uh, her her online presence with her website. That's KatherineBosley.com, correct? That's right. And of course, my TEDx talk gives you a little bit more about my personal story, what I did, what I did endure to, to gain all this knowledge. <laughs> Yes. And you can find that on YouTube. Right. You have your, uh, yeah, all that's on there. So again, Catherine Bosley, thank you very much for being here. Do check her out online. Uh, some great information about how to keep you safe and, and how to bet. There's no 100% guarantee, but obviously if you stay within these guidelines, you're as safe as possible with your online behavior. And these are great tips that just about anybody can use. So thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you for listening to the Billy D's podcast. And again, you can find me just about on all of the major podcast networks. I, most of my listens come from Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And then you can find me online as well. Um, Billy D's on Twitter. And that's kind of like my social media um, home, I guess. I got links to a lot of other things right in my bio. Do check me out. Thank you very much for checking out the podcast. And until our next episode, stay well and be safe. Thank you. Well, 
hello everyone, I am Billy Dees from the self-titled Billy Dees Podcast. You can find me on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and many more of the best podcast networks. Join me for my commentary and interviews. Follow me on Twitter, really easy to find, at Billy Dees. I am Billy Dees. I'd love to have you listen in.